Coming up, another day ends with still no resolution on the standoff in Iraq. President Bush meets with his top security advisors and says all options are open to make Saddam Hussein comply. Some folks are teed off about turning a golf course into a shopping mall. And Philly sings the blues, the river blues. It's all next on the 10 o'clock news. The last 12 months have been devastating. Disastrous. Pathetic. Ain't looking forward to another year like last year, I'll tell you that much. Have you had a bad year? Ah, last year? The worst year of my life. Awful. Rotten. Jinxed. My year was hard. Roy Rogers wants to help. Help me! With eight pieces of Roy's incredible fried chicken plus four free biscuits, now just $6.99. Things will get better. <laughs> it won't solve all your problems, but hey, it can't hurt. The Ross Summer Clearance. Save 50 to 75% off department store prices. Great fashions for the whole family at the Ross Summer Clearance now. This is John Denver speaking for Tree City USA. City trees add the soft touch of nature to our busy lives. We need to plant more trees and make a commitment to their care. Support Tree City USA where you live. For more information, write your state forester or the National Arbor Day Foundation. Night! Did you call me, Doctor? Why should I call you, Doctor? I'm the surgeon. Now you can have a daily dose of MASH, followed by Hawaii Five-O, weekdays on Fox 29. And now, the Delaware Valley's only primetime newscast. Fox 29's The 10 O'Clock News. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Bold, and here's what's happening. Talks ended at the United Nations today with no resolution on Iraq and little indication that there had even been any progress. While at Camp David, President Bush met with his top advisors to discuss Iraq's defiance of the U.N. agreement, which ended the Gulf War. Jill Doherty reports. President Bush huddled for two hours at Camp David with key national security aides, his press secretary at meetings end, issuing a statement warning all options are open. Saddam Hussein, it said, has demonstrated a broad pattern of defiance and non-compliance with UN requirements. The president considered the full range of options for enforcing full compliance with the resolutions. No options have been ruled out. The White House statement came as Iraqi ambassador to the UN, Abdul Amir al-Anbari, was proclaiming in New York the deadlock over UN weapons inspections was almost over. We are seeing eye to eye on so many things, and the few things remain to be finalized. But that wasn't how the UN official in charge of dismantling Iraq's war machine saw it. I wouldn't call that progress. We rather slide back and start it off again to go forward. but. Uh, so we are rough. We, we still have an outstanding issue. The U.S. is making the case that Iraq's intransigence goes beyond its unwillingness to open the agricultural ministry to U.N. weapons inspectors. And so far, that message is garnering the president bipartisan support. It is my view we have to be prepared for uh, some type of punitive action. I hope that it will not be required, but we're getting very near to the point where it has to be seriously considered. The president has the authority to go forward and, if necessary, together with our allies, use military force. A White House official says there is no timetable for decisions on any action, but there is a feeling of urgency along with some saber rattling. As Press Secretary Marlon Fitzwater put it, there has to be some point at which final judgments are made. Jill Doherty of the White House. Secretary of State James Baker said today reports that Iraq may give in and allow U.N. inspectors to look at records is nothing more than what Baker called, quote, cheat and retreat tactics. Baker is in the Philippines where he continues to monitor the U.N.-Iraq situation by telephone. Also today, Baker said that he'd like the Israelis and Arabs to resume the Middle East peace talks in Washington August 10th. The talks recessed last April. They've been on hold until an acceptable neutral meeting place could be determined. In Washington, the debate continues. The question, should Vice President Dan Quayle be dropped from the Republican ticket? The Washington Post reports that Quayle and President Bush seriously discussed the issue before deciding that Quayle should stay. Senate Republican leader Bob Dole says he thinks Quayle should stay. He says talk of a new running mate is an overreaction to the latest polls. 
if they had someone else. Who? Who are the, who are they, don't, they don't name anybody else. You know, that's it. You know, when you're behind 30 points in the poll, everybody give you lots of free advice. And one of the people in the cabinet ought to go that, uh, you know, the people in the White House ought to go, that Bush ought, President Bush ought to do this, that Quayle ought to go. I mean, it's just part of that mix. Now, if we were 30 points ahead, you'd say, boy, isn't this a great ticket. The Chicago Tribune disagrees. An editorial that will appear in tomorrow's newspaper says Bush made a mistake in selecting Quayle, and the only thing worse would be prolonging the mistake. Well, Time Magazine CNN poll out today suggests that dumping Quayle from the Republican ticket is not altogether a bad idea. Almost half of the people polled say Mr. Bush should find a new running mate. Republicans were equally divided on the issue. The same poll shows Democrat Bill Clinton maintaining a comfortable lead over President Bush in the race for the White House. Well, the Despite that big lead, Clinton continues his frantic campaign pace. Thousands of people turned out for a rally in Spokane, Washington, as Clinton began the first Western swing of his campaign. The rally was part of a 20-hour day for Clinton. The Democratic nominee says he'll keep up a jam-packed schedule because he wants an aggressive campaign. Federal regulators are looking into reports that a safety device used in nuclear power plants is defective. The reports indicate that the part may not signal when a meltdown is about to occur. Four local plants use the device, Limerick and Peach Bottom in Pennsylvania, New Jersey's Oyster Creek plant, and Hope Creek in Delaware. Pennsylvania has joined the list of states taking a flying leap to crack down on bungee jumping. Yesterday, the state began handing out cease and desist orders to operators, effectively banning bungee jumping until safety standards are met. As Farland Chang reports, some operators see the move as a good one as long as they can stay in business. The recent bungee jumping deaths and injuries in Michigan have already caused Florida to impose an emergency ban. And now Pennsylvania is getting tough as well. The state is slated to issue cease and desist orders until operators meet new safety standards. The standards are needed because up until now, this booming sport has been unregulated. And even the operators admit there are inherent risks when jumping 140 Five, feet off a crane. Four, three, deep breath, two, one, go! It's just scary. The height, it's scary. I didn't want the thing to break. In my head, bouncing off the rocks in the river. The bungee jumping outfit here at the Beach Club does not oppose government regulation. In fact, the managers here would like to work with the government to come up with a new list of rules. They say that would help to get rid of the few bad apples who give this industry a bad name. A lot of people who are getting into it once again are not, uh, not necessarily qualified. Uh, Obviously, it's, it's a very lucrative business right now, and a lot of people make one jump and think they're ready to operate their own business. The state's new order will require the maker of each portion of the bungee jump to set safety regulations and then meet them. It also requires operators to have at least half a million dollars in insurance. Adrenaline Adventures of Philadelphia says that's no problem. And it says its system has backups if anything fails. Yeah. I would never put myself or anybody else in a position where I thought it was unsafe. I know this is 100% safe. We're very good. We're very thorough. And equipment's incredible. Pennsylvania has had no reports of jumping accidents so far. And today, customers who felt scared at first came away believers. It's cool, man. <laughs> Do it again. It's pretty safe. It's safe. But until the state defines just what safe means, Pennsylvania still plans to stop thrill-seekers from jumping. On Delaware Avenue, Farlin Chang, the 10 o'clock news. Coming up, fighting a war against the mafia in Sicily. And Winfield residents trade their putters for picket signs to save their golf course. The 10 o'clock news is brought to you in part by Lens Factors. My glasses are always too tight or too loose. Why can't they ever keep their fit? You don't have to put up with glasses that don't fit anymore. Because now Lens Crafters has so many new ways to make glasses more comfortable. Now Lens Crafters brings you better fit for greater comfort. Lens Crafters glasses fit your snug points with features like new snug fit hinges that hug your head and won't lose their gentle hold. Now that's what I call a great fit. And they'll stay put. Lens Crafters. Better fit for greater comfort in about an hour. Is it on? Today, Wendy's is happy to announce a great low price on a new old-fashioned single combo. It's a quarter a pound of fresh beef, hot off the grill, made just the way you want it. 
plus baby fries that are really big, and you get your favorite 20-ounce drink. Now that's what I call a real meal. What's more, you save a bundle. Try Wendy's Old Fashioned Single Combo, just $2.99 for a limited time. Was it something I said? Our seal of confidence. Our commitment to you. Love a Toyota. Love Liberty Toyota. Love a new Toyota enough and save up to $3,300 on a new Toyota Corolla Deluxe. Love the giant Liberty Toyota Auto Complex. Save $2,800 and love a new four-wheel drive pickup. Save $1,700 and love a new two-wheel drive. Love low prices? Big savings? Love a new Toyota from the giant Liberty Toyota Auto Complex. Hurry, this offer ends soon at the giant Liberty Toyota Auto Complex. Route 130 and Jerome Street in Burlington, New Jersey. I needed a change of scenery, so I left Wall Street for two years and got a job in Africa with the Peace Corps. We've started a development program for local businessmen. You won't find them on the exchange, but we have our share of success stories. Helping Jomo get a loan to motorize his fishing boat has tripled his catch and meant more food and jobs for everyone. It's proved to me that investing in good people provides great dividends. Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Five children died as fire raced through a house in Pittsburgh early this morning. Authorities say the flames trapped the children on the upper floors of the house. Some of them panicked and hid in a closet. The victims ranged in age from four weeks to seven years. Firefighters in Utah having a tough time with an intense blaze at a chemical plant. The incredible heat generated by the fire has made it difficult just to get close to the blaze. The fire broke out yesterday, one day after a chemical spill at the plant. It's not known if the spill and the fire are related. Developers who want to turn the rolling fairways of a private golf course into the bustling stores of a shopping mall have landed in the rough. Residents are opposing the project, saying even if the sale of the land goes through, they'll fight it in City Hall. Rich Maneri reports. Picture this, the 82-acre Bala Golf Club leveled to make way for a shopping mall. These people can't. They're protesting a developer's effort to buy the club from shareholders for about $10 million. Sarah Bogdanoff isn't selling. I have been a member of this club for 22 years. I am a bondholder, and I cannot believe that ecologically they would allow one tree to be touched. The developers who want to turn this golf course into a shopping mall are Hal and Bill Wheeler. They would not talk to us on camera, but said when the time comes, they will sit down with residents and address their concerns. The Wheelers will also have to answer charges made by some that their track record in Philadelphia is marked with broken promises. We were betrayed. Lucinda we Dunkoff said the Wheelers promised no fast food restaurants in their development on City Line Avenue. Had his construction company, does all the construction on his deals, buy the next door property, put in a Taco Bell, Boston chicken, and a meat market. Bill Wheeler told me by telephone that though his construction company did build the restaurants, he did not develop the property and did not break any promises. Not illegal. But certainly deceptive. City Councilman Michael Nutter. Proposed developer here, didn't put it in his building, allowed his construction manager to put it in the building next door. They knew that people didn't want it. They have the same attorneys for both locations, and it's a joke. But no one here will be laughing Thursday if the shareholders at the Bala Golf Club decide to sell. In Winfield, Rich Maneri, the 10 o'clock news. In Mexico City, officials began new talks on a North American free trade agreement. Ministers from Canada, Mexico and the United States are hoping to put together the world's largest free trade accord. They say it is unlikely that a swift agreement will take place since there are so many unresolved issues. In Sicily, several hundred people held a silent candlelight march in support of the Italian government. Officials began deploying military troops to Palermo, a mafia stronghold today. The crackdown follows the assassination of Italy's top anti-mafia crime fighter and five of his bodyguards last week. 7,000 soldiers are expected to be in place by August 7th. Still to come, the sun will come out tomorrow, at least a little more than today. Bill Elias has the Sunday forecast. Later on in sports, the Phillies try to make it three wins in a row with the vet. But first, this week's segment of Philadelphia's Most Wanted. I'm Rich Noonan. Philadelphia Municipal Court needs your help in catching this fugitive, 26-year-old Robert Tuck. He also uses the name Rodney Hahn. Tuck is wanted on charges of drug dealing, aggravated assault, and resisting arrest. Municipal Court officials say this man has failed to show for court at least four times. 
If you know where Robert Tuck can be found, call the court warrant unit now at 686-7424. Tuck's code number is 61. Municipal court is also looking for this man, 23-year-old Eric Williams. He also goes by the name Christopher Williams. Williams is wanted on a long list of drug and theft charges. He, too, has failed to show up for court four times. If you know where Eric Williams can be found, call the court warrant unit now at 686-7424. Williams' code number is 62. Remember, when calling in a tip, you don't have to leave your name. Robert Tuck and Eric Williams, two of Philadelphia's most wanted. How bad is the recession? So bad, Al's vacationing at home. Good Al! Big sorry, the captain's turned on an opaque sign. Married with children, then... Wait till you jump out of an airplane at 10,000 feet. If Herman wants to climb the corporate ladder... That's perfect! He'll have to take the plunge... Shame! ...on Herman's head. Then the gang from down the shore try to break into high society. This place is so far from Jersey. That's the point. On an all-new Down the Shore. After Married with Children and Herman's Head, Sunday. I was a highwayman in England and was executed by the King's Guard. I fought at Waterloo alongside Napoleon. What about you? Were you reincarnated? Were you once another person at another time? The biblical answer to this subject will surprise you. Don't miss this week's World Tomorrow program, Have You Lived Before? Watch the World Tomorrow, Sunday at 8.30 a.m. Macy's preseason sale. The shopping opportunity of the year. You'll save on fall's best shoes and boots in casual dress or athletic styles. Get our lowest prices of the year from great names like Keds, Bandolino, Nine West, Kenneth Cole, Sam and Libby, Caressa, Amalfi, and more. Our biggest sale of the year. Macy's preseason sale. Don't delay. Prices go up August 3rd. It's back one more time. The new Future Rest is rolling back prices to 10 years ago. Plus six months, no payments or interest through Monday night only at the new Future Rest. When you give blood, you're giving something really precious, like the chance to graduate or have another birthday. Or fall in love. You're giving another chance at life. So give another chance and give blood. If you're 17 or older and you want to give blood, call the Red Cross. Well, we didn't get a lot of sun today, but as Bill was quick to point out, we didn't get much rain either, no, so I guess rain. I'm not going to complain. Pretty nice, uh, pretty nice day today, all in all, uh, for outdoor activities. You didn't sweat to death or anything like this, and it is a beautiful evening. We actually have clear skies in some spots and temperatures fairly mild, no rain on the radar. So all in all, we're doing pretty good so far. 60, or 76, rather, the high temperature today. 233, 64 was the low at 537. Normals are 87 and 68, so we're still in our string of below normal temperatures uh, for today. Record high was 95 degrees from 1987 and our record low is 56 from 1953. Sunrise tomorrow morning, 554 and sun setting at 821. Presently, well, outside's pretty comfortable, 70 degrees, our winds right out of the northwest at six miles an hour. Humidity is at 73% and our pressure is rising from 30.09. And temperatures this evening, fairly comfortable. 68 degrees for Allentown, Westchester, 69 in New Hope, Wrightstown was 67, Millville was 68 degrees, and Dover and Atlantic City, right along there along the boardwalk, 70 degrees. Surf water temperature still also hanging right around 70 degrees, and to me, that's just a dash too chilly. We had one record low in the 48 adjacent states this morning, and it belongs to JFK Airport. 59 degrees early this morning breaks the old record of 60, which was originally set back in 1963. And you can see some good news on the satellite picture. Clear skies, or partly cloudy skies to clear skies, throughout much of Pennsylvania and New Jersey. We do have some stormy weather, though, back through the central plain states. And unfortunately, this is all very slowly tracking off towards the east. And that is going to be in our forecast for tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. And possibly into Monday morning. But things do look pretty good for tomorrow. We should start off the day with partly cloudy to mostly sunny skies and increasing clouds as the afternoon wears on. By later in the day tomorrow and possibly into tomorrow night, seeing some scattered showers and maybe even some isolated thunderstorms. Our temperatures as well looking off a lot like they did today. Maybe a few degrees warmer. We're looking at temperatures 78 to 82 degrees, 85 degrees for Washington, D.C., uh, 83 degrees for Cleveland, Ohio, and Boston, Massachusetts. Beautiful day there today. 
uh, up in the low 80s. They're looking at 82 degrees for tomorrow. And much of the New England states today had sunny skies and temperatures all the way into the state of Maine were in the low 90s. It was gorgeous there. Well, anyway, tonight for us, or for the shore in the Poconos, I should say, mostly cloudy by tomorrow afternoon with afternoon showers developing at 78 degrees. At the shore, look for partly cloudy skies in the morning, mostly cloudy in the afternoon, and temperatures making it up to right around 80 degrees. For tonight, partly cloudy, there'll be some fog and haze developing and lows in the low 60s. For tomorrow, uh, variably cloudiness. Look for late afternoon showers and maybe some thunderstorms. Highs right around 80 degrees. And by tomorrow night, look for those clouds and showers to be more numerous and more fog and haze with lows right around 70 degrees. Now, the extended forecast really doesn't look all that bad. We're going to call tomorrow okay. Better the first half of the day than the second half. Uh, some of those showers will be lasting through Monday morning, but giving way to partly cloudy skies by Monday afternoon. And the rest of the week looks pretty good till you get till Thursday and temperatures Oh, from now until next Thursday should be anywhere from 80 to 85 degrees. So a little bit of rain by tomorrow night. Otherwise than that, pretty good Sunday in store for us. Okay, great. Thanks, Bill. Blues rules along the Delaware River this weekend. That was a big turnout for day one of the fifth annual River Blues Festival. Jimmy Clyde Copeland was among the artists wowing the crowd. Music will fill the air again tomorrow from 1 in the afternoon until 10 o'clock at night. The jackpot for the new Powerball game from the Delaware Lottery is estimated at $5 million. See if you're a winner tonight at 10.59 p.m. on Fox 29. In today's competitive world, true financial success is guaranteed only to those who are willing to sustain a single-minded commitment. I was on that fast track to grad school, but I decided to take a slightly different turn and headed for Africa. I joined the Peace Corps. I'm part of a team that's helping villagers find new ways to overcome an old problem. We're turning deserts into farmland. As I'm sure your parents have often told you, there's no such thing as a free lunch. My friend Baba says this is the best crop yet. You are the future. Each one of you has the capacity to achieve greatness. Sure, I'll head off to grad school at some point. But right now, I'm learning things that just don't teach you in textbooks. And where in the States are you going to find a campus like this? Be part of the future with the Peace Corps, the toughest job you'll ever love. Compared to U.S. Department of Justice figures, for all adults in large cities, gay men and lesbian women in Philadelphia are four times as likely to be victims of violence. If you want to stop violence and discrimination, call the Philadelphia Lesbian and Gay Task Force, 215-563-9584. If you have experienced homophobic violence or discrimination, please call the task force's hotline at 215-563-4581. Jeffrey, hitting is wrong. You're bigger, you're stronger. You cool off and you don't hit. Period. Is that understood? Is it? Well, is it? Take time out. Don't take it out on your child. A public service message from the National Committee for the Prevention of Child Abuse. Another exciting night at the vet. This one not quite with such a happy ending. It went 10. The Phils lose 6-2. to two. Jack went against the Giants. The Phils were looking to win their third in a row, which would have matched their longest winning streak of the season, but not to be the Giants with the four-run 10th inning. Greg Matthews making his second start for the Phils. First inning gone. Willie McGee. His first home run of the season, McGee is not a power hitter. He got all of that one, though. McGee on his 309th at bat of the season goes deep. After tying it on Darren Dalton's sack fly in the first, the Phils took the lead 2-1. Second inning, Lenny Dykstra, who had three hits tonight, knocked in Joe Millette. But the Giants tied it in the sixth after Robbie Thompson walked with two out. He scored on this hit by Willie McGee as Dykstra missed the cutoff, man. So it's 2-2 as Thompson scored. Now, Matthews went eight innings and left with the game tied 2-2. Tenth inning, though, off Mitch Williams. Mike Felder, the RBI double. Kevin Bass scored 3-2. Giants San Fran added three more to win it. 6-2 and 10. Meanwhile, Atlanta won their 13th in a row, one nothing over Pittsburgh. Ninth inning, Andy Van Slyke, deep drive for the Pirates off of Alejandro Pena. Gorgeous grab by Otis Nixon. Takes away a two-run homer to preserve the win for the Braves. Look at it again. The Braves run a Dave Justice second inning home run. They are only hit 
It came off Danny Jackson. Charlie Lee Brandt went eight innings, allowing four hits as the Hot Braves win 1-0. Zane Smith put on the disabled list by the Pirates. Craig Lefferts, two relievers combined, six hit shutout. San Diego over New York 2-0. Eighth inning, Montreal leading LA 4-1. Eighth inning, Chicago Houston at 1. Sixth inning, Cincinnati leading St. Louis 7-1. In the American League, Texas beat Baltimore 10-8, Minnesota over Boston 3-2. Ron Darling, two hit shutout, Oakland over Toronto 6-0. 30-year-old Tim Fortugno, I never heard of him, three hit shutout in his second Major League start, Angels over Detroit 9-zip. 5-5 in the ninth, Kansas City and Cleveland, seventh inning, Chicago, Milwaukee are scoreless. Day two of training camp for the Eagles. Rookie quarterback Casey Weldon signed tonight, so that leaves 12 veterans who are unsigned. The big off-season signing, of course, was Herschel Walker, and Herschel is in camp. Walker, the runner the Eagles were looking for, the familiar number 34 in his new Eagles jersey, just feeling his way and happy to be in camp with the pads on. You know, things seem to be going well. You know, everyone uh, doing everything they can to help me, to uh, help me to understand the system. And, and when you got people like that, it's going to make things a little bit easier for you. One thing that I'm trying to do is work with my time, and one thing you got to do when you first come in is.